Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, so far I've upgraded the, the uh, Skyhawk OTA and I've basically converted in a way a PDS or super tune of this telescope which now I can take astro photography pictures using the same focal ratio of f4.4 however I've been testing it out vigorously and I'm impressed how it's performed however I've come up to one problem and if we take a closer look all right, on the problem and the main problem is the mount so what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on my findings so far as if you take a look closer look on the RA motor the lock is tight the motor is engaged and it's switched on now if you take a closer look and have a, have a here on the motor Hear it? So that's what's happening there. The RA axis motor drive is jamming up, which means that the RA axis is too stiff. And that's the problem I've been getting. So even though I'm tracking an object and I'm trying to take a picture I'm getting star trails and this motor drive is seizing up it's just not moving the RA axis at all I'm going to loosen the RA axis and I'm just going to push the RA axis and as you can see it's very stiff Yeah, and there's like a, a proper noise as well. Don't forget the motor drive is disconnected, so it's not switched on. And if we lock the RA axis, and as we rotate it, there seems to be a lot of binding. I mean, a lot of binding. So, there you have it. The mount has suffered this very stiff motion on the RA axis. And as you can see, it's affecting my, my tracking massively. And it's preventing the electric motor uh, from rotating. So no matter how well your pole aligned and your guiding, or this is tracking, that RA axis is the biggest flaw we've got on this mount. Now, with this, we're going to do a, a sort of a super tune, and we're going to try and fix this problem with this RA axis. I mean, it is a damn good mount. It is an EQ Advan. It's a basic budget mount. It's just that the RA axis is really, really stiff, all right, and it needs sorting out. Because if I don't sort it out, I'm going to get a lot of problems. It's going to burn out my electric motor, and I don't want to do that. So that's something that Skywatchers should should really improve on. And I don't know why the RA axis is stiff, but we'll get to find out later on in the video. So, again, please hit a like. Please share this video. And if you've not been on this channel, or you just visited my channel, Again, please subscribe onto the channel and remember to hit the bell. Hitting the notifications bell will keep you updated on the new videos I put out. So if you're interested and you own this mount and you want to learn more on ways to improve on this mount and uh, we're going to sort out this problem. So if you're interested and you want to find out more Please keep watching this video and uh, let's crack on with good work and let's do this. First things you're going to need 
is you're going to need a very small flat point screwdriver then you're going to need a number two cross point screwdriver then you're going to need a lens removal tool or optical tool you can get this from Rover Valley Optics they sell this at a good price and you'll need this to get certain parts of this mount now you can use degreaser but you can use WD-40 but we need this to clean and degrease certain parts you can use isopropyl alcohol or whatever degreasing agent you can use but because I've run out of certain things I need I've had to make do with a WD-40 you're going to need a 2mm allen key you're going to need these, these are that are supplied with your telescope and your mount so you should have these now if you've got a motor drive you should have these allen keys okay so you should have, if you've got a motor drive fitted to your mount you're going to need these items as well clean rag a toothbrush that you're going to need to clean gears and stuff like that could be anything, electric toothbrush, no toothbrush, doesn't matter and grease now here I've got the Giro Optic grease type 1 and type 2 both are designated equatorial mount grease now the green grease is good for the uh, the worm drive and the, the gear wheel uh, and the other grease is good for the bearings and the shaft now these are specialized greases you can use lithium grease or bicycle grease but the thing is I recommend this stuff for an equatorial mount without a doubt I know it's expensive and I know some viewers say well you can use other alternative however throughout the years I've been working as a vehicle mechanic this grease works very good with equatorial mounts all right and it's worth that 18 pound all right I know it's expensive but it's definitely worth that kind of money this is the grease that I would recommend if you're doing a super tune on an EQ5 or EQ6 mount but again highly recommend that you use this stuff because this is designated for the mounts and that's the tools you'll need to do the job so to strip this out first thing you're going to do is remove the lock lever Okay, that comes out. Remove the slow motion knob. It comes out. Then remove this screw using the Allen key. Remove the knob and washer then remove the clutch the screw and then get access to the main spindle now at the spindle side and you see like a lock screw here you've got two of these allen parts here so we need to remove using the allen key slacken both allen keys I'm going to turn it round to the next one okay so that's both allen keys loosened then get your tool from rubber volley optics which is this you're going to place the tool in between the holes and then you crack them off like so okay you just crack it off right don't remove everything so this is 
slightly loose, okay? But well, to make easy access, we need to remove the deck axis using a 3mm X bit, slacken these nuts off, take them out. Okay, that's the deck axis removed. And with that, you see there is three Phillips screwdrivers. So use a number two cross point screwdriver, slacken them off. Now these are usually tight, but slacken them off. Like so. And then the last one is here. You can then take back and take off the polar latitude bracket mount okay that is now removed so you just have the ORI axis on its own so uh, we're going to remove the dust cover from the worm spindle and then there is a tension screw here we slack in the tension screw on the worm drive Then you've got locating screws that hold the worm drive mount. So crack them off. Take each screw out. Same again on this side. So now you have the worm drive disconnected from the gear. Then with the special tool, you then take out the lock nut. And then be able to take it out by hand. Like so. You now be able to see here there is two transparent bushes and a bearing. You take them out and there's like a a washer, a needle bearing, and then you've got another washer here. Here is the two and then here is the two very small washers, okay? Remember how they go. And now you lift, put them to one side you lift the component up, the housing, and then you have a gear wheel and spindle. In this spindle, if you lift it out from the spindle and the gear wheel, you expose, there is a clutch friction plate. Now this friction plate must be free from grease, so when you assemble it together, make sure that this is all free. So carefully, using clean hands, you can use a screwdriver to prise out 
the friction plate okay prise it out and then by hand with clean hands move the friction plate here now you have the main pressure plate this is also free from grease so that's the components of the ORE axis so now we're going to remove the worm drive from its housing to do this is a bit tricky because there is a little key in there that holds the spindle and the bearings together and to do that is you've got to get a flat point and slowly twist the key round and slacken the insert so I'm slacking it bit by bit turn each side okay that's that that is now the key sir, removed you then you then pull out the spindle like so this expose a bush this part can now be removed now you have the bare housing and then you should have the, the main support the bushes and the spindle removed so now that's the whole drive unit strip stripped down so now we've got the spindle and the gear wheel now the point I need to make is this needs to be clean this whole area if it's badly damaged you can use a very fine emery cloth to clean up this surface carefully only a mild amount of emery cloth but not too much okay very fine stuff with with this on mine mine doesn't really require it because it's quite new that's in good good condition so the thing i need to point out is this gear wheel has to be lubricated in a certain way now I've, I've cleaned it down I cleaned it out using WD-4A use electric toothbrush to clean out all the gear grease from that gear wheel it is now being cleaned and free from grease now if I flip it onto one side you'll notice that there is a wear mark now that wear mark is that position where this sits I place the friction plate over the, the uh, over the pressure plate okay now this is where we gotta be careful now we're gonna grease up this surface so we're going to apply type 2 geoptic grease like so okay and you only need to apply a very thin smear in this part here so you smear this all the way in just a thin smear careful that you don't get grease like I've just done now on that side if you do then remove it and clean it out with a rag and then make sure that this area is free from grease so push back the excessive grease luckily I've only pushed it back so I've got no grease there so a thin smear of grease around the inside you then get a very small screwdriver and dip a small tiny little bit along this part only a little bit all right tiny tiny bit you don't need to put too much 
Okay, that's literally, that's how it's grease. Then, on the part where it's got the friction, okay, see the friction there? I then place the gear wheel where the friction, where the wear pattern is, onto the friction plate. I then work it in, and there you go. That's all of the grease you'll need, all right? You don't need too much grease, because if you put too much grease, what will happen is you're gonna get grease onto the friction plate. So only a tiny bit of grease, all right? Now with the gear wheel, I get the outer casing, and I put a thin smear of grease inside here. Just, just enough just to put a coating around that part. Be careful not to put grease on these Teflon pads, okay? They're not meant to be greased. You then grab your gear wheel and then you're going to slot it into the casing, like so. Now we have the needle bearing and as you can see, after we stripped it out, this component is not actually being greased at all. So this was actually bare dry and I'm quite glad in a way that I've noticed that. So these racers of thrush washers, these are bone dry, all right? So they need to be packed with grease. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack this bearing with type two bearing grease, okay, and just pack it in, okay. Just pack it in to get through there. Just pack, work it way in there, all right, like so. All right, once they get through the needles, that's fine. Because what you're supposed to do is, if you squeeze it out, you can see the beading coming out there. Just work it all the way in, like so. So you can see how dry uh, that bearing was, very dry. So I uh, maybe they when they assemble this together, they didn't they forgot to repack this assemble with grease. So it can happen. So that is the the needle bearing greased up. And then all you do with these washers is just put a thin smear of grease around that. Just a thin smear, right? Same as that one, right? That is now that assembly fully greased up. With this bearing, we now get a housing. And we're gonna place the bearing over the spindle like so. So we now place our spacers, making sure that this is free. This this part is free from grease. You place the spacers on. That's the first one, and then we place the second one, like so. We then got the lock nut, and we screw on the lock nut. Feed it in with a couple of turns. And then get your special tool. Like so. And we're just going to tighten the lock knot. Now we're going to do the preload we're not going to do that yet, but we need to adjust the bearing, okay? So we'll just nip it up for the time being, but don't over tighten it, because we need to preload that bearing. And we're going to do that on the mount. So we're just, all we're doing is just 
that's it back it off right so it's on there we just need to readjust it so once everything's back together we'll then do the preload the adjustment on the bearing so now with the bearing installed we've not preloaded it yet but now with the gear wheel that's now in place we can lubricate the teeth on that gear wheel using type 1 grease which is this tacky grease green grease and you're just going to carefully butter lightly between between there right so as you can see there I've only put a little bit because you don't want to put too much so as I rotate it I rotate it round along here so I'm just going to butter that in there all the way around and as I'm buttering it I can turn the spindle around all right all the way around I just want to get it on the edge so I don't want to get it I don't want to get past onto the friction plate now you can grease this up prior when you install the friction plate but I find out that this is going to be better so I put a little bit all the way around like so I'll turn the spindle right and just put a little bit of this grease on the edge like so right now your gear wheel should look like this little bits of grease all the way around sparingly okay not too much just enough so that you can so that the teeth every teeth has got a bit of grease I haven't overlapped it or anything like that. Um, luckily, the gear wheel is slightly bigger, so chances of getting grease on the actual friction plate. Uh, luckily, this gear wheel is oversized, so it's not going to get any grease on there. So that is that part done. We've cleaned the worm drive using WD-40, just soaked along here, and I just used my toothbrush to remove all the old grease out there okay so now I've dried it cleaned it up okay so that's now the gear wheel nice and clean I'm going to place one of now these are already lubricated now these have got silicon grease so for the plastic parts okay because it's uh, a lot more safer for those parts so we're going to insert one of the parts that's already greased on this bracket and we're going to slot it in first. Okay, let's put that in there. Now this is the tricky bit. Now because of this design, we've got to get the housing and then place this spindle in there along with this. So. To do this, the trick is, what we're going to do is we're going to lubricate the sp the uh, the gear the uh, the worm drive. Just butter up with type type two uh, type one grease. All right, we're going to butter that up to lubricate it in between there. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's plenty of grease. So now we're going to get the bracket with all the bushes in there. We're going to line it into the housing and then we're going to push the worm drive into the hole. And remember, I'm pushing one of the uh, one of the bushing to the other side okay okay so it's in there so now work it in and right, the bush is in there now the next bit is we get the other bush to fit into here like so 
Now because we can't see that we're going to get the lock nut, fit it over there. So then we're going to get our flat point screwdriver and we're just going to wiggle that in there and then work it all the way around like so keep working it you might have to hold one side up on that side and then slowly just work that lock screw in there okay so we feed it in after holding the pressure we managed to get the lock screw in there now if you hold that base here I've got no end flow at either side okay so this spindle is free to rotate but with no end flow okay so if you do get a bit of play you just have to adjust that part there okay so now we're going to line up worm into the gear we then put our end caps they will go into these parts here okay you might have to twiddle the gear the gear housing so it goes in there properly so just feed it in like so once you get one in then get the other part same detail put the end cap in tighten her up If it feels like it's not going to go in just wiggle it around like so and there we go obviously we're not quite there so we need to slacken this part out so as you see they need to go into the hole so there we go so we so we're in there okay so that is the the gear housing in place for the time being so always do a quick check and as you see what I need to highlight is the two end caps are locked in but I need to check see if there's end floor and if I wiggle this I've got a little bit of end flow so I need to adjust that part again okay so I'm going to take them off again and then re-tighten re that again and then I should have no end flow like that okay so now we've tightened her up and we check the free flow and as you see we can we can turn the worm now okay with no uh, it's not too stiff either so I can freely rotate that all right and there's no end float for side by side movement now this part is the adjustment screw screw to adjust the, the gear wheel inside there and again we just tighten that up slightly all right all right and that will feed that worm into the gear wheel okay but we'll show you uh, a much better adjustment okay uh, once we get everything fitted now we can do the adjustments on the gear wheel and the bearing 
until we've as fully assembled the uh, the mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the bay, uh, put the main uh, pole alignment altazimuth mount. So line it up. We'll do a lot of adjustments later, but we just need to get it all mounted up first. Line it up. And then get the third screw. Okay, tighten each bit by bit so it's nice and square. Now these have to be tight, okay? Not too tight, just enough so that they don't come loose. Okay, so that is that assembly in. We then put our lock lever okay so again you can adjust it like always if it's not if it's not where you want then reposition it again by taking it off so and get the right lock position. Okay, so all right, so that's in the lock position, and that's that adjusted. Now, if you want to do the deck axis, it's really up to you. But personally, I think it operates quite well, to be honest with you. And the deck axis is not really that important compared to the RE axis um, but if you do want to strip it out the only difference with this one is you just got to make sure that to get it out you just screw this thumb screw out all the way out then take off the lock screw like so and again this will be the same layout as the RE axis so Remember this the same uh, disassembly that we did with the RA axis. This will be the exact same, okay? Okay, so that's loose. We then slacken this part. There's a lot of screw. Same, say exactly the same. Oh, we haven't got the, uh, the washers here. That's so the only difference with this deck axis is that there is no there's no nylon washers which is quite weird. So this will slide out. There's a the gear wheel. Same detail, you got the friction plate. Make sure you got clean hands before you remove the friction plate off. And there's your pressure plate. Pressure plate, friction plate, gear wheel. And then you've got your two flush bearing washers and that's the whole assembly for that. The only difference is, is that your deck axis does not seem to have the nylon spacers. And again, same detail, you just remove, if you want to take out the end caps off, take them out take these out like so but because you can't push it out you've got that inner race so you get your small 
screwdriver slacking it so this was now caught so coming out so as you can see I'm doing side by side this will come out there's nothing wrong with making a special tool to get this out so now that's removed so that's the outer part then you push that out relieving the gear worm gear and bush nylon bush then the whole housing comes apart leaving that bush in there as well so straight away exactly the same layout as the Ori axis I'm not going to go too much detail but if you follow the same procedure on the Ori axis all right you can't go wrong okay so I'm going to just go do my own thing now I'm just going to clean her up and then re-grease her up and then assemble it back together again same detail I don't know why this bearing is not greased I really don't understand that okay so this bearing is bone dry so I think that's the main reason why the mount particularly the RA axis is very stiff so bit of self I'm just going to use a bit of that bit of that type 2 grease all right to lubricate that bearing so now we've both got both parts stripped out cleaned up re-greased I've made sure that there's no end flow on each of the worm drives so they're free to rotate without any spin we haven't adjusted the bearings as yet okay uh, the main reason is um, I want to assemble this as it is and then I can adjust the bearing now already on this part I've got a bit of end, I've got a little bit of a wobble there but that's because I need to adjust that bearing but we're not going to do that just yet until we assemble it onto the telescope so we're going to put both axes together put them together like so and we're just going to put the screw in there just line them up same as that one there get in there luckily this will pull itself in okay these needs to be tight okay oh wow <laughs> that was spinning really quick so already I'm, I'm not being put it together like and it's already spinning like crazy so um that's good news so that is that part assembled we're going to put it back onto the tripod and pier and we're going to adjust these bearings before we do that I mean I was going to do uh, the polar alignment but to be honest with you, this rotates really well and it's well lubricated but I will consider putting a bit of type 1 grease just to lubricate the worm and uh, this this running gear all right just spiral it across like that because I noticed that's a bit on the the dry side now you don't have to do this all right but this seems to be okay to be honest with you it's not had any dramas so like always we just clean it up and then I just feed it all the way in working that grease in there I mean this is this actually rotates quite easy to be honest with you I've not had any dramas it's just just occasionally just put a bit of grease on the uh, on the worm drive so what we've done is we've got both axes together we've put the counterweight on there all right and what we're doing is going to adjust these bearings now when I was tight no, I thought they were uh, tight. So as you can see here, 
I've got some, I've got a good two or three mil free play there. So we need to adjust that bearing so that there's no free play. And again, get your tool and tighten up the RA axis. So adjust it like so. Okay, what we're doing is you just tighten it up like so, half a turn, and just move that axis about. As you can see there, I've done it just a too, bit too tight there. Okay, so we need to slacken it out, back it off. And as you can see there, we've got no free play. Ideally, I want to get a bit, little bit tighter, a little bit slack a bit. So we're slacking it out a bit. Check the axes. Okay. Just swivel that and work it in. Check again. Okay, that is that is now adjusted. So we're going to tighten up that bearing. Now, if it does slacken, you can always go back and retighten it, and then tighten up the other side. It's nipped up so this lock washer doesn't move. Okay, that's nipped up. So, so that's moving nicely. Now the deck axis can be a bit difficult to uh, adjust because because we don't have the the bracket to uh, mount the telescope on. And to do that, I just have to hold the base here, there's a bit of a friction here, and see if I can rotate it by hand. And at the moment, I think I've got it too tight. So I just need to slacken off. So I just need to slacken off the uh, deck axis. All right, so I'll tighten it all the way in, and then back it off half a turn. Okay, so I've backed it off half a turn. So I've tightened up the screws. And again, if I can't locate the screws, I'll just use the pad, move the pad with my hand, and then locate the hole. And then tighten up this side. Okay, just nip it up and swivel it back. Okay, so we've nipped that up best we can. Then put our lock screw back on and then. Our mounting for the one quarter thread, and then we'll put our dovetail if you've got one. If you haven't, just put the telescope straight on there. So we just tighten her up, and then I'm just swimming it around, just working it all the way in at the moment. I don't seem to have any free play as such. So that's good. Yeah, that locks up as well. So. So now we're readjusting it again. And as you see, now I can, re, can rotate the, uh, the deck axis. So now I'm going to put the telescope on there. Like 
so yeah there oh yes that feels so much better already even on the axis so by fitting the telescope we can get a true feel for the uh, any free play so at the moment there's no free play in the uh, deck axis and it does rotate nice and easy this is not particularly important though okay this is not particularly important because there's no motor drive on there and to be honest with you if you're in doubt and you don't want to save any you know you want to save time you don't really need to take the the deck axis but that is massively better than what it originally was but however this axis we need to adjust properly so the ori axis i think is slightly over tightened so again we're going to readjust that again remember to slacken the screws out so slacken them out now you notice that I've mounted it onto the tripod because I want to reduce the amount of movement make sure that your tripod legs are, uh, bolts are tight and make sure this is tight to the mount so all I'm doing is just making sure I don't have any lateral movement in that RA axis so I'm not really fussed about the deck axis being quite stiff but we just want to adjust it so that we can get a bit of free play and as you can see yeah I did too much so if I wiggle the, the tube all right I'm wiggling the tube and as you can see there even though it spins it's too slack so using the tool slacking it uh, tighten up just a bit like so recheck we still got play so keep going You just got to keep doing it, keep working that in. So we turn it all the way in, back it off. Just making sure I don't. Okay, that seems to be okay now. And I've noticed it's not as it's not like it spins like a top, but there's no but the whole idea is we don't want free play in that axis. However, it does free to rotate and it doesn't seem to be binding like it was originally. And again, you just gotta keep adjusting it till you get the right sort of thing. But again, if you're slacking it out like so, and we test it, see that? You don't want that. So you want to take that out. So, tighten it, back it off. Much better. Okay, tighten them up. Right, so now we've got the axis. Don't assume that this will spin like a top. You do not want this to spin like a top. And the reasons for that is, it, yes, you do have uh, a friction plate in there, but you don't want it to spin like a top because there'll be too much play. So because it's a basic mount, uh, a lot of the complicated mounts do actually spin very freely. But this is not binding but there's no free play okay so we don't want free play on there so now I'm going to put on the clutch plate so put the clutch lock in there like so then get your washer and your screw 
put that in there tighten it up with the iron key and just nip it up that's it just nip it up right so that is now the ORI axis lock and both are in place okay so and we've got no free play in the axis but it's free to rotate okay so now what we're going to do is adjust the either drive now have you noticed for this cap there is like a, a dust cap that goes on the ORI axis now I've decided to leave that out and the reasons why I'm leaving this out even though it a, is a protective sleeve I noticed that this is rubbing on the motor drive so where the motor drive couples onto there it's rubbing against there causing friction and we don't want that so I decided to leave that out all it is is a dust shield uh, I don't understand why it too much it's fitted it's not really required as such but um, it's the only one that's there weirdly enough there's nothing on the RE there's nothing on the deck axis with these these little grommets so leave it out it's up to you if you want to leave it in but I'm leaving it out so now we're going to place our slow motion controls so I put mine on the deck axis right so oh wow that's moving about freely yeah that's that's the deck axis in now I'm going to put the RA axis slow motion here now on the on the RA axis what I've done is I've left a little bit of a gap there okay so when I so what I've done is I don't want as much friction on that RA axis so what I've done I, I pushed it out pushed it in and then just left bit of a uh, a one mil gap okay so that slow motion control knob is not rubbing against the side of the the tube okay already it's feeling really nice so a lot more free to rotate there a lot better So now we've got the motor drive installed we're going to test the tension on the RA axis right even though I can turn it you can turn it by hand all right that's fine however when I tie it, lock this up make sure the RA axis is closed and I'll switch it on Now, at the moment, it seems to be at the correct tension, but I'm just going to prove. I'm getting, I'm getting the uh, the Allen key, and I'm just going to prove to you. If I tighten this, watch, see what happens. See it here. That has seized up. So you've got to get the tension just right. So you back it off. And as you can hear, so now we've got the correct tension on that motor drive. So as you can see there, we've got no binding. The motor's free to, is the motor is rotating the ORI axis, and it's not jamming the motor. Now we're going to adjust the deck axis and as you can see this screw is tight and we've got a bit of free play. As I see how I'm wiggling that I've got about a good 2mm free play okay and it's not moving the deck so it moves freely but there's too much slack. Right, and you see how much slack there is and it's not even moving the tube so we adjust it get the allen key 
locate the hole here and adjust the tension. Okay, just turn it up, half a turn, and then check. And look at that. Right, we're at the correct tension now. There's no slack on that axis. So, that's how you adjust the tension between the synchro mesh of the worm drive and gear wheel. So, what do you reckon guys and girls? So far, I mean, it rotates very freely and uh, unfortunately, I could not be able to test it out because like always, I'm played with clouds and weather's not been too good. It's just been cloudy all the time. Even though it's getting warmer at the moment, I've not been able to test this telescope which it's just one of those things if you look at the results from where it was standard and to what it is now there is a slight difference i'm not saying it's a, a huge difference but because it's using the existing um, bearings and all that the grease has helped a lot and i think due in manufacture the re axis was just tightened up just too much so that's why I had to do it. But saying that, after testing the RA motor drive, I didn't have any problems with the RA motor drive. It was not struggling, it wasn't binding. So that RA axis is a key feature to sort out. Now, I highly recommend that if you got this mount, I will only do this as a need basis. So if you've got the motor drive and you get into the similar problems, then I would highly recommend to go through this video and do the modification yourself. All right, so that's only if you get problems. If you're not, then by, by all means, don't bother with it. But if you do have problems, then have a look into the RE axis and then follow this video as a guide so that you can do the same. It is very simple to do. It's not too complicated. Everyone can do it with a few tools to do it. And the other thing is, the deck axis, to be honest with you, it's okay, but it does move, it does move freely. I can't see the problem with the deck axis, but I did it anyway. But if you want to do it yourself, then feel free to uh, undertake this, uh, this uh, project. So now my mount is now free rotating and bind free my electric motor will not burn out all right so what i see it is it is a preventive measure and it will stop things from breaking down but it's something that skywatcher need to highlight in this look forward to another video coming out soon again i've got plenty of more projects coming out hopefully the next video will be able to start imaging with this setup and able to start auto guiding. So look forward to that, that new video when it comes out. All right, again, please hit a like if you like uh, this video. And again, please subscribe onto my channel. And uh, again, share the video out. And if you want to get notified, just hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these new videos that come out very, very soon. So we just wait on until the weather plays ball. 
and uh, I wish to say thanks for watching stay safe everyone and I wish you all clear skies